Yo, all Snapchat, let's discuss universal Darwinism, genes, memes, teams, and taxis. Check out this damn view. So last night I was re-watching this awesome TED talk with some amazing company. Uh, the talk is by Susan Blackmore and she talks about genes, memes and teams and it's been a really foundational video from many years ago for many of my ideas. So we all know that Charles Darwin's theory of evolution is really based on biology and the idea of genes replicating. Um, but back, actually back when he like, you know, came up with the theory he, didn't, he wasn't even aware of genes. Darwin was really going off just animal characteristics and patterns and the way they're kind of like, you know, bird beaks change and evolve over time and the different variations of species. But now we know that all of that is encoded by information. And so if you instead look at evolution as rather than a pure biological thing, as an information-based process, as, an, as information evolving, essentially the genes, the DNA, evolving over time with each species. And by looking at evolution as an information-based process, now you can apply this concept called uh, universal Darwinism, basically taking the idea of evolution and applying it to everything in the universe. After genes, we have memes. And memes are this, this concept of information sharing, information spreading, um, these ideas, these thoughts, these behaviours, kind of trying to infect human minds and stay relevant. So the word meme was actually coined by Richard Dawkins, of all people, um, in his book, The Selfish Gene, when he was talking about um, kind of like the medic mimetic spread of ideas on top of this genetic base. And he derived the word meme from a, another Latin word that sounds similar that means to imitate, which is essentially what people are doing. People are, uh, humans are imitating each other, and that's how the memes spread and stick. So an example of a meme might be something like, um, you know, someone decided to wear a tie and decided that was like a formal attire thing, you know, that's, that's what men should do. And now everyone wears ties as a normal thing with suits. Or things like language, culture, um, religion, nine to five jobs, like just, just everything. Um, every piece of information we come across that sticks into our minds and spreads, it evolves and, and breathes. And a great way to look at this, and she actually uses it in her talk, she's like, okay, imagine uh, there's a whole bunch of like brains and there's uh, a limited number of brains, but there's way more memes that can fit in those brains. So these memes are like little entities always trying to infect brains and keep relevant and, and evolve and, and have sex and, and change and infect as many minds as possible so that they don't die off. Which is exactly the same type of existential drive you find in the biological world. I mean, this is why animals and species compete with each other for resources. Um, they have sex, they evolve, they change so that they remain relevant and don't die off. So then with universal Darwinism, it's like an informational process. And there's actually only three factors that uh, require it to evolve, for genes and memes to evolve. Variation, selection, and heredity. So variation is obviously like, you know, the sheer number of animal species, the sheer number of genes out there, and in the meme world, like the sheer number of ideas and memes competing for attention and resources. Selection is the feedback loop in which they operate, so genes operate in the environment, the harsh environment, and that determines which ones actually get selected. Uh, memes operate uh, in the whole cultural landscape, the mind landscape. And heredity is basically just like its ability to be passed on. I mean, genes are passed on from generation to generation, memes are passed on from, uh, from brain to brain. Right now I'm spreading memes into your brain, so they're spreading. Combine those three factors to any type of informational process and you get evolution. So this doesn't have to occur just at genes and memes, it can also occur at teams, technology memes, or anything beyond that even. Teams is the idea of looking at technology as its own self-evolving species, as its own replicator system. Um, you know, our mobile phones are evolving, our computers are evolving, the internet's evolving. Actually, Kevin Kelly has classified uh, technology as its own kingdom in the animal kingdom. He calls it the technium, and he treats technology as though it's a species, as though your phone is a species. And that's a really awesome way of looking at the world, as though every piece of technology is a, is a... It's no different to the biological world. I mean, everything's atoms. These are all atoms. This phone is just atoms. I'm atoms. We often tend to have, the, have this distinction in our minds that, you know, technology, the computers, the, the kind of, like, clean edges, the, the plastic, as though that's an artificial thing. It's not real. It's not... Nothing. But these things are all inside the same universe. You know, the atoms in your phone are no different to the atoms in this plant, are no different to the atoms in your arm. They're just structured in a different way. They're all part of the same universe, so it's the same thing. Actually, one cool example I know Kevin Kelly gave is that he has a mate who collects trumpets, um, all, all the trumpets way back through history, and he's actually classified them as species and shows how they evolve over time. Because just like genes inside animal species evolve to remain outside of that realm of extinction, which so many other species have gone through, so too do memes, ideas, and technology. They evolve to stay relevant. Okay, so here's the kicker. So if the universe is like a fractal evolving equation, uh, bi biology and genes are fractal evolving equations, um, memes are fractal evolving equations, and so too technology. Then the core driver of all of this is information processes. Um, every little gene, every little idea, every little piece of technology is a little evolving process trying to infect your mind and replicate. The problem is then you're forced to contemplate this idea that humans are meme machines and we're actually not in control. Just like genes produced us and we didn't really control that process, although we're starting to now, memes produced us and we don't control I'm spreading ideas right now and they're infecting your mind, but is it really me that's doing it or is it the memes that are replicating? The memes need to stay relevant. This idea needs to spread and somehow it wants me to spread it to your mind. 
and they often say this, like your, your mind's being infected by these ideas right now. You'll subconsciously um, evolve them with the other ideas you have um, and those, those memes will have sex and you'll spread them. You're a replicator for memes. And now when you apply the memes idea that memes are in control and not really um, you know, humans, we're just replicators, then teams, technology memes, are the same thing. We aren't in control. This is Blackmore's points in the TED Talk was that, you know, if we look at the internet and we're like, oh cool, it's really great we made that, it's really great, you know, we did that, it helps us, it benefits us. But did we make it or did the teams make us do it? Because if you look at technology as a, as an, a self-evolving species with a um, kind of selfish desire to replicate and evolve, then, you know, that, the reason we have smartphones isn't because we want it, it's because the teams want it. And when we all start strapping VR headsets to our, our eyes and also like implants and merging more and more with the machine and wearing AR glasses every day, do we want that or do the teams want that? If you switch your mindset to this concept of looking at technology as a, a selfish evolver, a replicator that's just usually you know, piggybacking on humans to get its own endgame, that's wow. And I mean, like you look at it from a macro level and our smartphones, the internet, VR, AR, they're actually changing our brain structure, our neural pathways and the way we think. They're in charge. They're controlling the humans. I have an online mate, uh, Johan uh, Nygren, I probably butchered his name, but he's basically taking the same concept of like hereditary selection and variation and applying it to a basic income project. So utilizing the Ethereum blockchain, so a decentralized system, he's actually looking at, he's created this thing called Taxemes, which is basically a way to like distribute uh, value and money and a basic income to everyone on the planet. I think applying that type of thinking to the Ethereum blockchain, particularly because it's decentralized and can never, ever, ever be shut down and it can go globally and everyone can plug into it, he's onto the right track. And I think that'll apply to so many other things. I actually like to apply this same concept, this whole like taxines, genes, memes, uh, variation, hereditary selection to the gig marketplace and jobs and education to evolve faster. But that's an idea for another time. My brain needs to process that one a little bit more. Um, so yeah, what do you think? What do you think will actually be after Teams? Will there be something beyond that? Um, go watch the TED Talk. Let me know your thoughts at Future. Cool, the